Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. Today we have a first generation Chevy Silverado 2500 inside of our studio. I want to go over some of the top problems that we've come to find, so let's get started. Now for our first problem on this truck, we're going to talk about the gauge cluster. That's going to be of course located right in front of the driver, that's where your speedometer is, and all the rest of your gauges. A symptom that you might notice if you're having an issue with your gauge cluster might be the speedometer tends to drop out. It could even be where your RPMs are or even any of your other gauges. A lot of times when this happens, it's more than likely going to happen to all of them at the same time and it's more than likely going to be intermittent at first and then of course over time it's going to eventually get worse. Now a fix for this is generally going to come down to bringing your vehicle to the dealer and they might be able to do a relearn procedure on the actual gauge cluster. But overall, if that doesn't work, you're gonna have to actually replace the entire gauge cluster. Now for our second problem on this, we're gonna talk about the gas gauge being erratic. Essentially, maybe even after you just recently filled up, it seems as though the gauge just kind of bounces up and down or even drops out a little bit. So now I have a fuel pump in my hand and no, it's not the one for this truck. It's just one that I have access to that I can show you the fuel level sensor. A lot of times what goes bad on these is the fuel level sensor. And essentially what happens is, is your fuel level is supposed to bring up this float and then of course the sensor down there is going to say, hey, I'm full. As it goes down, the sensor is going to gradually go down and that of course is going to correspond with the fuel gauge on your dash. Essentially, if this sensor that's up against the fuel pump assembly itself goes bad or it doesn't read like it's supposed to, you're going to notice that you have an erratic fuel gauge. You could try to take out your fuel pump from the system, replace just the sensor and then try it that way. A lot of times what people generally do is they just replace the whole thing as a unit. Now for our third problem on this, we're going to talk about the service four-wheel drive indicator light on on your dash. When this light comes on, it's going to be on the dash that has, of course, the electronic four-wheel drive switching unit. Essentially, you're just going to have little switches instead of the big old lever under here to switch to four-wheel drive. Generally, the causes why this might actually happen would be either the encoder motor that's located on the transfer case, which is essentially going to tell the transfer case to switch from either two to four or four to two is bad internally or the like or even maybe the switch itself is bad. Both of these are very common issues and essentially the symptoms for it would be, well, your four wheel drive just really doesn't work like it's supposed to and like I said, you got a light on in your dash. Now if I was gonna go ahead and try to fix this, of course I would have to diagnose. Like I said, two of the most common causes would be the switch, so I would start there and then of course the encoder motor down by that transfer case. All right friends, for our fourth problem on this truck, we're gonna talk about an ABS light on on your dash due to a poor ground wire. Now, symptoms that you're probably going to get if you're having an issue with your ABS system would be a light on on the dash. Of course, that's going to be super common. Something else that you might happen to notice is that the brakes just don't work the way that they usually do. Typically, your ABS unit is supposed to make it so you can stop your vehicle, especially in an emergency type of situation, safely and smoothly without skidding your tires. If it's not working, well, you can imagine the rest. A lot of times what this comes down to is actually a ground wire that's going to be located underneath your battery and underneath the battery tray. This is going to be a very important ground wire because like I said, it of course needs to ground out the ABS unit which is going to make it so your brakes work the way that they should. Typically this wire is going to be a braided type of wire. You can see another one located over on the firewall over there. It's going to look a lot like that. If you happen to see it, it looks like it's green and corroded or even it's crumbling and falling apart. That's definitely something that you're going to need to service or replace. Typically for good measure during your diagnosis process is you'd want to have an electrical diagram for this. You want to make sure you check all your power and grounds everywhere where it should be. But generally, if you just get underneath this battery right here and of course the battery tray, you're more than likely gonna find an issue with that ground. Whoa. <laughs> for problem number five, we're gonna talk about a strange popping noise coming from your muffler heat shield. Now for symptoms for this, you're really not gonna notice anything in exception of just the popping noise that's coming from your exhaust. Other than that, you're really not gonna find an exhaust leak or anything like that, or at least not associated with this popping noise. Can you have an exhaust leak? Sure. But for this popping noise, generally it's not something that's easily fixable unless of course you were to replace the muffler. If you don't have a leak, it really doesn't make much sense. The reason why the popping noise might occur is generally because as you're driving, everything's heating up and of course metal expands as it heats. As things start to cool down, or essentially as you turn off the truck and you start walking away, it starts to want to cool and contract. If it starts to want to cool and contract quickly, well then of course it's going to make that popping noise. So real quick, I've got a bonus for you. On these particular trucks, or Chevy trucks in general, what you might find is a daytime running light tends to burn out quite often. Now symptoms for this, what you're probably gonna notice is that one of your bulbs tends to burn out quite often, sometimes within weeks of when you've actually replaced the bulb the last time, even before the other one goes out. A common cause for this might be because you go ahead and replace the bulb, but you don't actually pay attention to the bulb socket. That's the area that the bulb goes into. 
If you were to take a closer look at it, what you might happen to notice is that the prongs are discolored, the plastic around the area is swollen or even melted a little bit. Generally, that's because the bulb either heated up the pigtail a little bit too much and it melted that connection point, or even the connection point was just weak and it melted itself. But overall, you could try to put a bulb in there. It might make pretty good connection for a short amount of time, but it's generally gonna just go ahead and burn out quite often again. If you find that you're having an issue with a reoccurring bulb burning out, don't just replace that bulb over and over and over and over and over. You're gonna wanna make sure that you replace the pigtail that the bulb goes into at the same time as the bulb. More than likely, that's gonna cure your issue. Okay, friends, so that's pretty much what I've got for you for top problems on our Gen 1 Chevy 2500. Are there gonna be other problems? Yeah, just like every other vehicle. Maybe you have one of these trucks of your own. Maybe you've got a story of your own. If you do, make sure you leave it in the comments section below because I always love to hear from you. Make sure if you like the video, you smash on that like button for me. It would mean the world. While you're at it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell. That way there you can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks.